Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you and welcome back. Today, I'm going to be making hot cocoa bombs. These are little chocolate spheres that contain hot cocoa powder, maybe some marshmallows, maybe some crushed candy cane. You place them into your empty mug, pour hot coffee, pour hot milk, whatever you're inclined to pour on top of it, and it will melt your sphere of chocolate unloading its contents, making for a lovely, eventful, and exciting cup of cocoa. Well, at least it looks exciting. That kind of <clears throat> happens and then, and then you, know, you know, hot cocoa. So I first learned about this a few months ago. I didn't want to do the recipe until it got a little bit colder and it felt more like hot cocoa season, but this has been around for a few years. Apparently you can buy these hot cocoa bombs and when I researched this three months ago, there are just a couple of YouTube videos, including Jira Williams' video, which I'll put a link down below. I'm gonna be basing mine loosely on hers, although now there are tons of videos on how to make homemade hot cocoa bombs. I really want to make these myself because I want that experience of the of the contents, you know, into my hot chocolate. Yes, yes. So you're gonna need some kind of hemisphere mold because we're gonna make a sphere after all. And the most popular one I've seen used and the one Jira uses in her video is the silicone red mold. I happen to have the same exact mold. I used it to make my raindrop cake years and years and years ago. I'll put a link down below to that video in case you missed it. Next, we're gonna need some compound chocolate. Now, I think it's important to use compound chocolate or baking melts because you don't need to temper this. You're gonna get a nice, beautiful, shiny effect using compound chocolate rather than using real chocolate. Real chocolate is pretty finicky <laughs> in my experience. And you have to have it at the right temperature to ensure that you have the right kind of chocolate crystals in your chocolate so that you have a shiny and crisp result. You want a beautiful looking cocoa bomb. Well, with compound chocolate, you don't really need to do that because it is a compound chocolate. It's not pure chocolate. There are other additives, fats that are added to get that crisp texture and that sheen, but what you're sacrificing is flavor. You're not gonna have that really great, intense chocolate flavor. But we're not making some kind of fancy dessert that we're charging an exorbitant price for. We're making hot cocoa bombs. I think these would be great gifts to make for people and compound chocolate is gonna be the simplest way to go. So what we're gonna do is take one pound of compound chocolate. This is also called almond bark, or you can use candy melts, and you're going to melt it. You can do this in a microwave safe bowl and place it in the microwave for 30 second intervals, stirring in between until it gets nice and liquidy. Or you can do what I did and place the chocolate into a heat safe bowl and place it over some boiling water. So once you have about 95% of the chocolate melted, turn off the heat and just allow the rest of the heat that's in the chocolate to melt the remaining chocolate. We don't want the chocolate to be too hot. If it's too hot, your hemisphere is gonna to be too thin. So take about two tablespoons of your warm chocolate and place it into your hemisphere mold and then use the bowl of the spoon to coax the chocolate along the walls. We really wanna make sure we get enough on the edge of the mold because that's gonna be the thinnest part and we want that really kind of to be built up. Tilt this and rotate it around. You can also flip it upside down to tap out any excess. Then we're gonna place it in the refrigerator for at least five minutes or until it sets up. Compound chocolate sets up very, very quickly. So this is the stage we're at right now. Let me go grab my molds. So here are my chocolate hemispheres and they've set up and they look shiny on the inside and I'm hoping that they're gonna be shiny on the other side as well. Now we're gonna very carefully extricate these out of the mold. So just gently pull this out. So I do have some cracking here, which is fine, I guess. Oof, very shiny though, look at that. These are cracking more than I want them to. And right around the edges, we're gonna do just a little reinforcing. These molds have cooled, so the chocolate should solidify pretty easily. So let's try to get these out once again. Perfect. Lovely, look how shiny that is. If they crack a little bit, it's all right. You can either remelt it or just use it and just like, it's fine for the kids, as Kevin McAllister would say. 
Now we've got to glue them together. So I'm just gonna warm up a nonstick pan on low for just a few minutes, just so it's just barely warm. So now we're gonna fill the cocoa bombs. So I've got some mini tiny marshmallows here. These are the kind that used to get in the Swiss Miss bags, the little tiny, tiny dehydrated marshmallows. And I also have some hot cocoa mix. And I also have some crushed candy canes here as well. Now we're gonna take our hemisphere and put it on the skillet. Just rotate a little bit just to get the edge cleaned off. Okay, that'll make it nice and flat. Two teaspoons of hot cocoa powder. I'm gonna add some marshmallows. I'm gonna add a bunch of marshmallows and do the same thing. Rub it on here and place this right on top. And that's gonna be our cocoa bomb. There you have it, my lovelies. There is a hot cocoa bomb. I can't wait to place this into my mug with some hot water. Alrighty, let's make another one. Do the same thing. Cocoa powder. And put marshmallows in this one too. And to this one, I'm gonna add some peppermint. Oopsies. <laughs> this is one mini candy cane that I've crushed up. There's the peppermint version. To dress this up a little bit, I'm gonna take a little of this hot chocolate and drizzle it right on top. Dun, 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 dun. Alrighty, my beautiful lovelies, look at my hot cocoa bombs. Aren't they adorable? So I went ahead and placed them in these little cupcake liners, makes them a little bit more professional looking. It also hides any imperfections, which I definitely have. I add a little bit of holly for decoration, and these are so stinking cute. Alrighty, let's go ahead and see if we can make our hot cocoa bombs bomb. So over here, I've got some milk coming up to the scald here. I'm gonna pour it into this pitcher makes it easier to pour. Now it's important to make sure your mug is large enough to accommodate the diameter of your hot cocoa bomb because if it doesn't fit then you can't do this, right? I'm going to opt for the peppermint. So I'm going to take my spoon, kind of use that to help it. There we go. Lower it into the mug. Now for the moment of truth. Here we go. Hot milk over our hot cocoa bomb. Dun, 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 dun. That burst of all the marshmallows, yes, that's what I'm talking about. Eww! So now we're gonna stir this up and get all that hot cocoa and chocolate to mix into the milk and the peppermint too. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to do this with my kids. They're gonna love it. This means it's officially holiday season. Cheers. No. <laughs> That tastes like childhood. Something about the flavor of instant hot chocolate transports you to age seven. So good. You've got those strange dehydrated marshmallows on top that are crunchy and have kind of a frosting flavor to them. It doesn't taste like real chocolate. It tastes like instant hot cocoa powder. And of course it does because we have a combination of compound chocolate and hot cocoa mix. The hot chocolate itself is very rich because we used hot whole milk rather than hot water. And there's a little bit of peppermint in there. I think I would use more peppermint flavor to make this more pepperminty, but just a little kiss of mint in there is really quite nice. Mm -hmm. I think these would make really fun gifts just for the experience of the exploding chocolate bomb. And who doesn't love hot chocolate? Also, I am a huge fan of consumable gift giving. I love the fact of giving something that can be consumed, enjoyed, filled with love, and not fill up someone's space. Just love that. Alrighty, my lovelies, that's how you make hot cocoa bombs. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends, follow me on social media, like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye! Take care. Bye. <laughs> I don't know. Hot cocoa. It shouldn't make me burp, but it does.